everyone today we are going to discuss the topic about the holy quran chapter on not four al umasa the scandal monger introduction and background the quran is the holy book which muslims recite and turn to for guidance in all aspects of their life the quran has been preserved for over 1400 years through the parallel memorization and writings the quran is the only holy book that has been memorized in its entirety of muslim people muhammad was very vigilant in preserving the entire quran in written form as well the prophet could not read or write so as soon as a portion of the quran was revealed he called upon his scribes to record the revealed text muslims believe that the quran is the speech of god and not a book written by muhammad himself The Quran consists of 114 chapters of 6000 verses originally revealed to Muhammad over a period of 22 years these chapters are called surahs and are arranged according to their lengths the name of Allah appears over uh then 2500 times in the quran the holy quran emphasizes service to god it envisions a society based on the unity and equality of believers the quran is the central religious text used by most muslims to guide their prayer rituals worship services and family traditions now we are going to see the central theme of the chapter hal humasa This surah has 9 verses. It takes its name from the first verse, Umaza, the slanderer or the backbiter. This surah was revealed in Mecca most probably during the early days of Muhammad's proclamation of his prophethood. The central theme of this surah is how slanderer talks about the man who is in loss and gives the exceptions. This chapter tells who are those men that would be in loss and it condemns those who think bad for others and imagine that their wealth will keep them safe from death one who abuses and disgraces others are called slanderer this surah narrates and depicts the hell in detail and describes the doom of hell which awaits such people there is no several depiction given to hell in the quran than the description given in this surah especially when god says about hell what he has not said in other surahs when the fire is attributed to hala it's more than that it's a fire lit by god himself but the author of quran muslims believe that the quran was orally revealed by god to the final prophet muhammad to the angel gabriel incrementally over a period of 23 years beginning in the month of ramadan in pre islamic arabia the society during the time of muhammad was predominantly oral and for this reason he would recite the quranic verses to his companions for them to memorize Therefore it is unknown whether he Quran was ever written and collected during the time of Muhammad while writing was not a common skill during Muhammad's time Mecca being a commercial center had a number of people who could write some scholars believe that several scribes including Said ibn Thabit and many other rec- recorded verses of the Quran this provides an explanation as to how the quran existed in written form during the life of muhammad even if it was not compiled into one text sunni and shia muslim scholars generally believe that the quran was written down in its entirety at the time of muhammad's death a few shia scholars argue that ali presented his quran to the community but they refuse to acknowledge his copy According to Sunni scholars during the life of Muhammad parts of the Quran though written was scattered among his companions the number of scribes was 43 companions and there were many people who thought were not scribes were also complete memorizers let's get into the summary who to every slanderer defamer humaza means a person who defames men or speaks evil of men or backbites them to be simple a backbiter or a scandal monger a scandal monger habitually blames reproaches find faults with and attacks the honor and character of others with evil motives 
who amasses wealth and considers it a provision piling up a wealth by not spending it in the service of those who need it is another vice condemned in this sura the slanderer the backbiter and the hoarder will be thrown into huttama huttama means which smashes and breaks into pieces it is a fire that destroys everything that is cast into it the fire will not only scorch the body but also destroy the soul it will cover them all over it depicts the person's miserliness and his selfish hoarding of wealth he thinks that his wealth will make him immortal no he thinks the wealth he has now will protect him in the future but allah says that the slanderer has forgotten death and he never bothered to consider that a time will come when he will have to depart from the world empty handed leaving everything behind na he shall most certainly be hurled into the crushing disaster because of his wealth he thinks that he is a great man but on the day of resurrection he will be hurled into hell as a worthless object he will be punished by the huttama which is a hell fire and what will make you realize what the crushing disaster is the question put in this verse about huttama means to signify that man in this life not having seen anything like it cannot visualize or understand what huttama actually would be the fire locks all doors upon them so that there is no escape it is the fire kindled by halla it not only expresses the dreadfulness of the fire but it also shows how the contempt of halla envelops those who became proud and arrogant with the worldly wealth that's why allah described that fire as his own fire into which they will be hurled which rises above the hearts the fire of allah will not be blind like the fire of the world like deserving or not deserving but it will reach the heart of every culprit and discover the nature of his crime and then punish him according to his guilt surely it shall be closed over upon them in extended columns after the culprits have been thrown into it hell will be closed without any gap or opening anywhere in order to choke and suffocate them at last the gates of hell will be closed and tall columns will be erected on them then the culprits will be tied to that columns and then the flames of the fire shall be rising high like that tall column to summarize these nine verses in a short way that is every slanderer and the one who collects wealth and do not spend in good cause will be put in fire columns how quran is important and useful in our life holy quran is a source of guidance for all mankind the quran teaches one how to lead life and the path to choose for a happy life it gives peace to a person by the way of finding happiness in others life too the holy quran tells us the kind of life which would help us and which will intercede on the day of judgment as per the holy quran this life was created by almighty allah and he also created the death but the life in between is considered as to test you as to which of you is best indeed The Quran explains the purpose, the moral, spiritual, and social values. Quran preaches that no one should defame someone or speak ill about some other person, as Allah will punish for sure. A scandal monger habitually blames, upbraids, reproaches, finds fault with, and attacks the honor and character of others with evil motives. Without knowing someone's character, original character, no one can defame them or backbite them with the evil motive. Imam Ali quotes. What you bring forth will go into dust what you hoard will be left behind what you build will be leveled to the ground in time but what you do is recorded and increases for the day of final requital whenever a person piles up money for his own sake and doesn't help any other person when they are in need and safeguards the wealth for his own sake will be punished by Allah so one must help other by sharing their wealth and not only their wealth but also their peace of mind In the above mentioned quotes it is said that no person can take their wealth with themselves to the even whatever a person inherits will turn into dust one day and whatever he brings is will also turn into dust so at last what matters is that a person's goodness their character and whatever they are in their real life which is regarded as an asset and it is considered for the final requital in this current situation people try to sustain their life by the money they had saved and by not helping others everything that they need and fear for the future 
But the Holy Quran states that it is wrong motive. When one has something, they must try to share with others who doesn't have the same thing. These values lead to human freedom, responsibility and empowerment. Timeless themes that help us you can change your life in a moment. It tells us that the life can be changed. Quran teaches us how to be in peace and harmony with one another and how to live wisely and healthily. If anyone thinks that wealth will abide him forever, is fooled by his imagination for the matter, it is not for eternity and it is considered as only a passing show. So one must understand the reality by speaking at the back of back of others is not a great thing. By speaking at the back of others or backbutting and gaining and acquiring wealth is just for this life and not for eternity. I'm gonna conclude the presentation now. The Holy Quran is the greatest book of knowledge and nutrition for all humanity and for all time. It provides us language and messages of Allah for more than 13th centuries. The Holy Quran is the last of all the holy books revealed by Allah to his prophets. Whereas the other books changed or got corrupted with time, the Quran still exists in its first original purity. The Holy Quran is a complete code of life. One can find a solution to every problem such as social, economic, moral and religion. It gives us complete guidance and clear instructions about our life. Every aspect of our life has been discussed in detail and logical way. The Holy Quran is not for an individual or a nation. It is also for the whole of humanity. It is for everyone, for the believers as well as the non-believers. It brings a revolution in man's life. The Holy Quran acts as the basis of Islam and its teachings that are pivotal in understanding Islam. It can be concluded that the major themes of the Holy Quran are God, Prophets, Man, Divine Scriptures and Sin. Man is guided by the sacred scriptures which are a revelation of Prophet Muhammad. Through Divine Scriptures, God can protect man from sin. Thank you.